So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joette Calabrese and I'm a homeopath and educator and a mom. And that's how it all started was by becoming a mom. So, um, and for those who do know me, welcome as always, dear friends. It's great to see everyone. You know, and in these strange days, um, it's uh, it's particularly nice to have friends that are, are, are remote. It really makes such a difference because we know that there is a community of people out there who are interested in the, in, in the real, the real medicine, the real stuff. Um, it doesn't mean that there is no value in modern medicine. I've said this many times, but this is the medicine that keeps you from being afraid. We don't use fear tactics in homeopathy because we have solutions and they're inexpensive and easily learned and also wonderfully um, 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 efficacious and that can easily be taught to your children. So um, today we are going to be talking about, let's see how I wrote it. Who loves learning about using toxins? We do. <laughs> so I'm gonna teach you about how to use the earth's most toxic substance. This is what I wrote, that when made into homeopathic medicine will turn your world around and it will, especially for those who have throat infections or have throat infections in their families. And uh, because these medicines, these mercurius is what we're gonna be talking about. Last talked, last time we talked about mercurius C Y A N cyanide, um, and or um, and and it's it's pronounced a couple different ways. And today we're going to be talking about mercurius soul or mercurius vive. Now I'm going to suggest that you take a look um, for a, a really in depth conversation. Let's see if I can find this. That you go to Perry. Can you give me that link that I gave you? Perry, can you give me that link that I gave you to? Um, you jotted it down for me somewhere. I put it over there. Okay. Oh, you're gonna lie. You're gonna. Okay. So there's a, an interesting link from the. Um, I think it was the National Center of Homeopathy. So it, that explains uh, Mercurius a little bit more in depth because there are many medicines made from mercury because there are many types of mercury, and they are all of value. But the ones that get the most coverage. Um, the one that gets the most coverage that is most often used is the one that Hahnemann, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann used, and um, it's Mercurius Soul, S-O-L. And also it's, it's, um, it's uh, what I call it, now I wouldn't even call it a half-sister, I'd call it a, um, a, a twin, Mercurius Vive. And it explains a little bit further why there are so many. This article that, that uh, we're going to be putting up here in a minute but just know that for practical purposes, because that's what we're all about here is practicality, that uh, for practical purposes, purposes, Mercurius Soul and Mercurius Vive are essentially interchangeable. So whether your kit says Soul or your kit says Vive after Mercurius, you can use either one or the other. It's not a matter of semantics. It's really a matter of the, of the pharmacology and exactly how it's made. So in some, and in some pharmacies throughout the world, they call it Vive, and in other pharmacies, they call it Soul. Um, so they are, in essence, interchangeable. Hi, Joanne, I love you too. It's one of my dearest friends right here. <laughs> so I want to direct you to um, this article that I published in the Weston A. Price Foundation. I had a, uh, an, a almost a 12-year running uh, um, article or column, I should say, in the Weston A. Price Foundation's journal. Um, and I want you to take a look at it. It's If you just Google this now, I think we're going to put this up too, but just for in case we don't get it up fast enough, it's Weston A. Price Foundation, Homeopathic Mercury, Bring It On. And it's my article that I published in 2018. And what I want, the reason I want you to read it, it's it's uh, free of charge and it's great for you to be able to read this, is, is because it, it explains through a case, the importance of looking at an entire case when you're choosing a homeopathic medicine. But to, so I want you, That's this is that article here. And then um, I want to also get to the Materia Medica, which is of course what we do pretty much every week is we go through my Materia Medica. This is what it looks like. 
And for those of you who don't know what a Materia Medica is, it is simply a book in alphabetical order of homeopathic medicines and their descriptions. It does not give you the protocols. Protocols come from the un an understanding of the, of the Materia Medica, but that comes from people who've been in practice for many years. So uh, Mercurius Soul, which is the other name for this is Quicksilver. Interesting, isn't it? Quicksilver. And what I wrote in my Materia Medica, I'm going to read from this, is that the keynote is lymphatic swellings. Now, that means it's the tonsils, because the tonsils are part of the lymphatic system. Um, it could be the lymphs under the ears. It could be in the back of the neck. It could be um, axillary under the, under the arms. It could be at the top of the legs. Anytime we have those kinds of lymphatic swellings, we do want to think about mercurius solubilis. So that is, and we call it mercurius sol for short. So I'm going to read to you what I've written in my book, and then I'm going to skip around a little bit and give you a little bit more information. Um, it's used for a variety of problems, generally linked, generally linked by copious and pungent secretions. Now, what do we mean by secretions? It can mean that when someone is sleeping, they perspire, the pillow is stained yellow. The sheets can be stained yellow. I'm not talking about after years of use of a pillow. I'm talking about pretty much consistently the person is, is sleeping the next day, the pillowcases are stained or is stained. Um, they, this, these include problems of the mouth and throat, such as oral thrush, abundant secretion of saliva. So too much saliva, and that would be presented in either in speech, you know, as though the mouth is watering, or in uh, drooling during sleep. That's all abundant saliva. Now, does this mean it's for someone who occasionally, just thinking about it is making me <laughs> have to swallow. <laughs> just thinking about it. So does this mean that it's someone who has drooling occasionally? Or are we talking about someone who has drooling pretty consistently almost every night? or when it's an acute problem that it's pretty um, copious. It's more the latter. If someone drools occasionally because they're so in such a deep sleep or they've had a drink, an alcoholic drink, and it made them sleep in a strange way with their mouth gaping open and saliva may have inadvertently slipped out, that's different. I'm talking about something where there's either a habit of it or it's a, a situation where it's an acute and it's pretty copious. So we're not looking for those occasional events. We're looking for something that truly represents this person. They can, it's considered for eye infections with thick discharges, ear and skin infections with pus, and also urinary tract infections. So the person in need is prone to swollen lymph nodes during the illness. So we're talking about an acute or even a chronic. So it's often effective in the treatment of mumps. Remember when we used to get mumps? I'm a mumps survivor. I'm a chicken pox survivor. <laughs> I'm a measles survivor. Amazing, isn't it? We actually made it. I made it to adulthood, way past middle age, <laughs> by having a normal child childhood illness. Interesting, isn't it? So other health conditions calling for Merck soul include neuralgic pain, sporadic coughs, Fever accompanied by soaking sweat. See, we're talking about this discharge. Lots of perspiration. The perspiration can be oily. It can be odorous. It can be yellowing, yellowing of the clothing, yellowing of the pillowcase, lots of saliva, lac lacrimation of the eyes. Um, it can also be oily. Okay, strong smelling. I just had preparation. Headaches, distended glands, earache accompanied by foul smell, smelling discharges. So discharges. And these are not pleasant discharges, uh, discharges. and it's not um, a coincidence, or perhaps it is, that mercury was used and is now just finally uh, being acknowledged by the American Dental Association that perhaps mercury is not a good thing to tap into a tooth. Um, <laughs> perhaps we should never have gone that way. But interestingly, we also find swollen gums and dental issues. And mercurius, mercurius soul, mercurius vive, mercurius cyan is, is also used for medicine, or is also used for conditions around the mouth, that's saliva, the lymph nodes, the throats, strep throat, 
very, very powerful for strep throat, the ears, millimeters away from the teeth. This whole area, even sinuses, very important medicine for these areas. Distended glands, I said, earache accompanied by foul smelling discharges, painful joints it can also have, chronic conjunctivitis. What's conjunctivitis? Itis is inflammation of conjuncta, is the inner eyelid of the eyes, uh, chronic which means, it doesn't mean that the person has conjunctivitis every single day, although that can be it as well. It can also be conjunctivitis that comes and goes, comes and goes, uh, accompanied by red, swollen, burning eyelids and watery and aching eyes. Rixol has also been used for nasal problems caused by allergies or colds that feature a raw runny nose, stinging mucus and sneezing, as well as skin disorders featuring encrusted lesions with foul smelling image. See this foul smelling? You know, when moms tell me, I know when my child has a strep throat because I can tell by the odor that's emitted from the child's mouth. It's a distinct odor. Not all sore throats have that, but strep does. Pus-filled eruptions. They can be pus-filled eruptions on the face. It can be on the skin, can be in the mouth, can be on the tonsils, in the throat. Okay, so pus-filled eruptions, blisters on the surface of the skin, Ulcers, ulcers, that's canker sores, could be ulcers in the throat, could be ulcers even uh, in other areas of the body as well, or open sores that cause intense burning. Now imagine the pain, if you've ever had strep throat or any of your children have had strep throat, you know that um, it can be painful. It's not always painful and it doesn't always have an odor, but we're talking about those conditions that are more common. Um, so that we can have kind of a better picture of it. The person that uh, that needs Merxol may experience an intense craving for cold drinks and may be highly susceptible to cold and heat. Perspiration is profuse and foul smelling and often makes the symptoms worse. In other words, as the person is perspiring, the symptoms are getting worse. I'm beginning to think I need it. Hold on, I'm thirsty. <laughs> Okay, there will, okay, and immediately after drinking something warm, the sufferer will, sweet, will sweat. Salivation is marked, and a person in need of mercurius will complain that his pillow gets wet because he drools so much at night. He, has, um, he may uh, comment on a metallic taste. Surprising, right? This is a metal. It's a corrosive, mercury is a corrosive, toxic metal that has been packed into our teeth as per what has been recommended by the American Dental Association. Now, look, I'm not here to disparage dentists, uh, but I do want to point out that when we see experts who consistently say, this is what we use, this is fine, it's safe, we've used it for tens of years, decades and decades or half a century, hence it must be okay. I'm sorry, I don't necessarily buy that. So. Let's get that and extrapolate it a little bit. And, and any time we hear someone who is an expert who's absolutely committed to one way of thinking, we think the opposite, at least for a while, to, to kind of counteract, counterbalance what we're being told and, and going deeper and deeper. And I talked about this last week, the importance of flexing your no muscles. Or at least, even if it's not a no muscle, that you're flexing, I want you to flex your skepticism muscle. I want you to be skeptical. I want you to think twice. And 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 how about a postponement muscle? Just postpone the decision to get that test, unless it's critical, obviously. But postpone that decision to get that particular, uh, um, take that drug or subject yourself to that test, or have your loved one subjected to it. Just slow down, doc, slow down, hospital. Let's just take a look at this. There's no reason why you have to move quickly for medical concerns unless it's critical and, and an emergency. Then I concede. Like a mercury thermometer, mercurious people are sensitive to extreme changes in temperature. So when somebody says that there's a there, someone has a mercurious personality, it means they're up and down and up and down. It's the it's the temp. They're they're hot. They're cold. They're hot. They're cold. They can't make a 
but maybe they make a decision. But when they do make a decision, it's all over the place. It's one extreme or the other. And so people who need this medicine sometimes, not always, have a very small, narrow band in which they can be comfortable as far as temperature is concerned. They get hot quickly, they get cold quickly. Now, when I tell you these, when I give you these examples or these these descriptions of this of these medicines it does not mean that if someone says well gee i get hot easily and cold easily i must need this medicine not good enough what i'm telling you when i'm fleshing this all out is we want to see pathology a disease a condition that's really noteworthy that is worthy of using a medicine and then you can help support it by using such characteristics as I get hot easily, I get cold easily. So though these are just um, uh, 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 conditions or symptoms that help us determine whether or not all the other part of the picture that you're putting together is well-founded. So don't choose one and say, this must be it for me. No, 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 no. And I will also tell you that it's very easy to go through my Materia Medica, any Materia Medica for that matter, and, and just read through it and say, wow, that sounds like me. Wait a minute, hold on. This also sounds like me. Wait a minute, this one two days ago sounded like me too. They are gonna sound like you. You're going to relate or your, your, your child, you're gonna have your find a relationship to these medicines for your child, your husband, your mother, your, your, your father-in-law. You will see that because these medicines are made from products or, or substances that are found on earth and we live on earth. So we have some association with them on some level or another, whatever that may be. Even for someone who has never had mercury fillings, even if it's someone who's never had strep throat, it doesn't mean that it can't be um, connected on, on one level or another, but don't become, don't jump at, at theories. Be sure that you're using a medicine because it fits. It really fits. It doesn't have to fit everything that I just described. If the person has got swollen glands and perhaps they have canker sores and they have um, uh, 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 a great amount of saliva, yet there's no odor, don't, that does not mean you don't use it. But if you've got two or three of the main characteristics, the keynotes of the medicine, and it, uh, some of the other supporting symptoms fit, you probably have a dead ringer. All righty. Now, some people asked me last time, what's the difference between Mercurius Soul or Vive? Which is, and I say it that way parenthetically because I want you to remember that Soul and Vive are interchangeable. Um, and Mercurius um, C-Y-A-N. So I pronounce it Cyan, um, and, but, it is, it is a, a different type of mercurius that is that many, I never really learned about it very much when I was studying homeopathy some 35 years, 33 years ago. But I do find that there are very specific calls for this. And one of them is um, septic tonsils, which I've just talked about. And we also know, I just finished saying that that also has to do with mercurius soul abscesses, tonsillitis, strep. We can use mercurius soul slash beef, but the Banerjee's have a protocol in which they use mercurius cyanide and cyanaris. Um, and it's a 200 C mixed with belladonna three, as well as Kelly Muir. And there are a bunch of other, the way they describe it, a couple of other medicines. And it's given every three hours alternately during an infection, during one of these infections. So when we see something that is very specific, tonsillitis, peritonsillar abscess, septic tonsillitis, my first thought is to go with what the Banerjee's have presented. And that is Mercurius Cyan 200C mixed with Belladonna 3C and as well as Cali Muriaticum 3X and used every three hours, excuse me, it's not mixed with, alternating with 
please excuse me. Let me go back and say that again. Mercurius Cyan 200 mixed with Belladonna 3C, alternated with Cali Muriaticum 3X. And I know that uh, Natalie will put that up there for you. If you need me to say it again, I'm happy to, to uh, make sure that I've got it clear, that I've made it clear. Um, and you use that every three hours when we have an abscess or um, severe tonsillitis or septic tonsils. Can we use Mercurius Soul slash beef? Yes, we can. Because it's a lot easier to get a hold of. It's in a lot of homeopathy kits. But whenever the there's a Banerjee protocol, I bow to that. And so I usually go with that if I'm going to use uh, a Mercurius. So I, I might start with that even before I would consider Mercurius Soul or Vee. I don't know that I've made myself clear. I hope, certainly hope that I have. And let's see what kind of questions we have. Um, yeah, here we go. Shelly says, I'm a mumps, measles, and chicken pox survivor also. Gosh, I wish I knew about this when I was pregnant. I had so much saliva. I had to keep a cup with me at all times to spit it out, particularly the whole nine months. Yeah, you often find um, um, copious salivation in pregnancy and in during nausea of pregnancy as well. Uh, would this help to relieve metallic taste in the mouth following chemo sessions? Um, well, let me put it to you this way. As I, I think I just explained this, but I know the questions came in earlier than, I, than my explanation. It could potentially be very valuable, but I'd want to see a little bit more than that. And people often say, well, can we use it for this or does it fit that? That's when I say, retreat, hold on, go into your materia medicas and start reading and find out if there are enough aspects of this medicine that you could say, yeah, I'm really kind of building a case here. Would this help for sore gums if you haven't been able to have the mercury fillings removed? Uh, well, it is excellent for sore gums. I have not quite said that yet, but it's excellent for sore gums, you bet. But don't jump on it because there are other medicines for sore gums as well. One of them is not even a medicine. Some, so, uh, Many people have reported to me that their gums are less sore after swishing with coconut oil or olive oil. So um, oil pulling can be very useful done daily, sometimes twice daily. Here's someone from Ajax, Ontario. I love that. We've heard from that person before. Such a great name. If I ever get another dog, I've thought about naming him Ajax. I love that name. Um, yes, you're very welcome, Jan. Yes, Donna, your suggestions have helped me tremendously. I'm very happy to hear that. Another Donna. Yes, it will be spelled out, Dawn. Don't worry, it'll all come up there now. It will be all spelled. Here we go. People are starting to write it all out. Mighty members. Yes, thank you for joining, Mighty members. I'm on Facebook. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and share this broadcast, says Natalie from it, says Joe at Calabrese's staff. Hello from Indiana. Okay, survival of mumps, chicken pox, and measles. Isn't it amazing? Liberty Veritas. Would, would this be for someone who stains their, sh their shirt's armpits yellow? Well, here's the thing. Sometimes the staining of clothing can be from deodorant. I'm assuming this person's not wearing deodorant, okay? But uh, it can be from deodorant. It can be from, from antiperspirant. It can also be the perspiration in conjunction with a non-natural uh, um, fiber. So if there's any polyester in the fabric, that can do it. The, I would not use this for that. I would use that as a girding, potential girding up for all the other conditions. I do not consider that a, a pathology. So I would not use something as powerful as this medicine is for something like that. Merck Soul took care of my grandfather's thrush after a stroke where pneumonia occurred resulting in heavy perspiration. Beautiful, nice job. Um, after antibiotic use, the hospital uh, resulting in heavy prescription, excuse me, of antibiotic use. The hospital used Nystatin for three weeks with no resolution. Merck's soul resulted in less than a week. Nice job, Christy. My friend, Christy. Uh, right dog with rusty eyes discharge. I don't know. I'd want to see more than that, certainly. Merck Soul helped my mom's terrible toothache. Great for dental issues. Great. Merck Soul helps smelly discharges. It absolutely does, particularly discharges from this area. Okay. It can be other areas as well, but especially around the mouth, the throat, the eyes, the, the tongue, the gums, etc. Thank you so much. 
And K, listen to this lady. Okay. And love that. Counter the balance of what you're being told. You bet. Counter the balance. You need antidotes, folks. Because living in this society, think about what's been happening these last eight, nine months. We need antidotes to these, to, to this, to this narrative that we're hearing, we're being bombarded with. And if we don't have an antidote, we'll just fall in lockstep. Uh, turning in late due to my husband. Okay, getting wrench. Okay, getting a socket wrench to the face too. So happy we have Hypericum, Ruta, and Arnica. Well, speaking of Arnica, and I've talked about this before, I just want to share this with you. Um, I didn't sleep very well last night. Um, that happens to me every once in a while. Um, lots to do, staying up too late. Then I get very busy and I have a more difficult time falling asleep. And so I didn't get enough sleep as I should, but I had a full day of work. I was fine. And I put in my full day. Then my brother, my husband and I had dinner together. And suddenly after dinner, it just hit me. I was fatigued. I was just beat. It felt like I hadn't slept. It was pretty clear that I hadn't slept. And so um, I knew I had to do this tonight and I'm going to be meeting a class. I've got three classes tonight that I'm meeting with with my Gateway group. For those of you who don't know about Gateway, please uh, consider joining. It's a great group of people, very inexpensive, and they meet regularly. So I'll be teaching that tonight. And I knew that if I didn't do something, um, I would be absolutely exhausted. And I don't drink. I mean, I have a little bit of coffee in the morning, but you know what, an eighth of a cup. I could not have a cup of coffee to rouse myself. And it felt like it, I needed more than just a perk. I needed a whole rehaul or overhaul, I should say. So I took Arnica 200. Mm, now let's see, it's uh, just about 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. I probably took it at about 7.45 and I've perked right up. I wanna give you that tip. I've given it to you before, but I want to remind you of the importance of knowing these medicines and that they have an ability to do good even in a, in a very quickly like that. Um, colorectal cancer, one of the remedies in the Banerjee protocol. Yes, you bet. God bless you again and again. You're very welcome. Took you my changing out mercury feelings. That's a great question. Do you recommend changing out mercury feelings? I had mine removed some 28 years ago. Um, and I was, at the time, I was not as healthy as I would like to have been. And I was hoping that it was going to be really a sweeping change in my life. And it was not. And the, uh, the protocol was correct, rubber dam, vitamin C, oxygen, et cetera. Um, and I didn't see any change at all. And I've had lots of people report to me they've seen no change at all. But I also have a friend who had mercury fillings removed. She had allergies. They were not severe, but they were nonetheless a big part of her life, a somewhat of a part of her life. She had the mercury removed. It was done semi-properly. I can't remember what aspect was not included. And she ended up with multiple sclerosis type symptoms. I don't know that it was ever diagnosed exactly as multiple sclerosis, but it took years to get past it. And it was on the heels of having had the fillings removed. So it's, I would say that the decision to have something like that done is a case by case situation. Um, all right, I, it's really, we're pretty much done. I've spoken far too much and help in some forms of hot eczema. Let's see, I do oil pill daily. Would this help to post herpetic neuralgia following shingles? It's not the first remedy I think of, but I've written about it. If you look up Joe at Calabrese post herpetic shingles um, or post herpetic neuralgia, I'm pretty sure I that was published online. Check that out, my name and those words, and you will probably find exactly what you're looking for. Trigeminal neuralgia along with almost daily migraines. I'm not going to get into that today, but but for those who have pain, lots of pain, and I love to be able to give you as much as I can for free here. Remember, I do have a course titled Pain, um, and you can get it on my site, and we are relaunching the course on uh, on, on called Mind um, Mindful Homeopathy, so that it covers, uh, what I do in that course is cover, these are all online courses, I cover emotional and psychological problems that homeopathy has been known to address. And so for those who are my mighties, yes, article source, please post article source. I think we'll do that. Perry, you'll be posting that article source, right, for us. And if it won't be done while I'm still speaking, just stay on for a while. And I believe that, um, cool. pardon me? 
Um, no, I think it was the the um, the source of the article. It was probably Western Price is what they're talking about. I think that's so. Okay, we wanted to know. Okay. All righty. I lost 15 pounds within one week of getting mercury fillings out. Fascinating. Yeah, well, there's a lot of suppression in toxins that are that are in the body. There's no doubt about it. And so with that, my dear friends, I will see you next Monday. And we will go over. There's so many questions here that maybe I can get back and answer some of the ones that, that remain even next week. And so with that, I say God bless all of you. Mwah. <laughs> and have... A great preparation for Christmas and happy Hanukkah to those who are already in their celebratory um, lifestyle for this, for this holiday. God bless all of you. Bye now. <laughs>